Hello. Hello. This is Gerb. And the Dave. And uh, this is our next Elder Scrolls 6 video. We promised you. It's about difficulty. 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 Oh, Lord. I don't think they've ever actually done this right, Dave. Out of all the games they've made, they've never done difficulty right. Not once. Not even in Morrowind. And yes, I know, I love Morrowind to an obnoxious amount, but for the love of God, Bethesda, can you not understand how to make difficulty better than just a, you know, damage slider? Uh, so we're going to be going over uh, quite a few points about difficulty and how they can improve it and what they should do, or add in, rather, and uh, what they should take out, which there's only one thing to take out, <laughs> and that's the stupid slider. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a shorter video. Sorry for everybody out there who likes the longer ones. Uh, it, it just happens. Yeah. It, just, it just works. Yeah, we don't really think we can stretch this to 45 minutes. I mean, we might. Maybe, maybe. 45. That That's like, Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's also not going to be broken up into sections. There's no annotations to click. Just deal with it. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a low production one of these. Um, well, I mean, it, the editing's still going to be bomb diggity. Be text up on the screen and everything. You're doing the editing, right? Yeah. So, uh, without further ado, let us move on. Okay, first and foremost, what they need to remove. The difficulty slider. Yeah, just get rid of that junk. It is the worst thing that has ever happened to game difficulty that I've ever seen. You slide it up, your opponent does more damage, and you do less. Uh, you slide it down, you do more damage, they do less. That's not a challenge at all. And they changed it in Skyrim, it's like difficulty options, but it's still the exact same thing as the slider. It does the same purpose. What they need to do is go with like the Kerbal Space Program option for their difficulty. You click on one, you know, easy, medium, hard, and there's options underneath it. And then once you select the one with all the options you want, you can customize it from there and become a custom difficulty. Custom! That wouldn't even be that hard to do. If a company that is like really small in Mexico can make a game with that kind of difficulty settings, Bethesda, I think you can handle this. You can do it! Maybe. So, kind of building up our a point there mm -hmm. about the difficulty slider, when you change difficulty, there should be an option to make it so your opponent can have more skill in, say, their armor, which would reduce damage they take but not increase the damage they deal out, higher skill in the weapon, giving them more abilities, like, you know, different movesets and whatnot, and, you know, just better skills in general. You can essentially improve your enemies or, you know, NPC skills at a higher difficulty, and a lower difficulty, they go lower. So mm. normal, kind of in between. Of course, there's that whole thing with leveling, you know, with you that certain opponents can do. They'll still be part of that because they'll either be on your level or above or below, depending on what your difficulty setting is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, higher armor rating, say, they take less damage. Higher weapon rating, they do different attacks that you're not ready for. And there's also the chance of them doing things like parrying you if they have a shield and whatnot, or a second-hand weapon. Because it just is so much, it is a lot better than just, oh, you put the slider up and, oh, he does more damage now. It's just, it's more variety. Definitely more variety, that is a key thing in difficulty. And that's just one aspect that they need to improve. So I mentioned, uh, not too long ago, actually, it's a very a short... A couple seconds ago. A few seconds ago, parrying. That is something I need to talk about in this. Uh, criticals and parrying should be a thing. And it should be a kind of chance thing that your opponent can do and something you have to time in order to do. And the timing can change with difficulty slider. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, though, is I don't think parrying should be able to be done on just regular moves, like everyday slashing, because if you up the difficulty and they have a higher chance of parrying, say it's a 50% chance, and a regular hit could be parried, that would just be kind of annoying. Uh, but it can open you up for a critical. So it should be on power attacks. When you go do a power attack, or when your opponent goes to a power attack, if you time it right, you can parry them and open them up for a critical. Not necessarily insta-kill, but it will do maybe double damage or something, or higher skills that, you know, counter attacks would give you more damage. But that would be interesting to see if they make that an option in difficulty. Now I'm not saying that's, that's not even in the game, I know. I mean, you have shield skills, you can bash people and can't stop their attacks, but there's no critical in the game. But if it is in the game, there should be a separate difficulty option for that. Seems about right to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to take a look back at Daggerfall for a moment. When we're done with parrying, 
That's there's not much to say on that. We're on to diseases. We're on to diseases. Uh, looking back at Daggerfall, you could die from diseases. That's amazing. We haven't had that since Daggerfall, and I really love that feature. <laughs> now, I don't think everybody else would love that feature, so I think it should be a difficulty option because diseases aren't going away. Mm -hmm. Especially like STDs, uh, Dave TDs. Dave TDs, I got my own. Yeah, okay. you got your own variety of diseases, Dave. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> any kind of disease. I know there's no blight disease unless somehow the blight comes back, but regular diseases, you know, there's varying strains, and, you know, different ones can be stronger than others. On a higher difficulty, you should have a set time before your character dies from the disease. And there can be, you know, symptoms. You're going through coughing, wheezing, uh, you fatigue faster, you get weaker as the disease progresses until it kills you. And of course, on lower difficulties, the disease won't have much of an effect at all. Mm -hmm. uh, with normal being that it won't really kill you. It'll just slow you down more. Or slowly drain your health, but really slowly, like over months. Not, not actually your um, health, but your max health. Yeah, your yeah, overall. And of course, it'll be restored when you get the disease cured. Yeah. Actually, no. When you get the cured, it slowly goes up to what it was originally supposed to be. That's just cruel and unusual. I like it, Dave. Well, I like the cruel and unusual. This would be on like very hard difficulty. Yeah, and of course, all these things we're talking about, they're going to have modular bits to them. So, under diseases, you could, uh, you know, increase what the effect of it is and how it affects you. And under parrying, you can increase its effect. So, each one is individual. It's not just an on or off option, like they have in KSP, but, you know, a multiple option. And I think that, you know, it. D curing for a disease shouldn't be as easy as going to an altar and praying. You know, I mean, that can help on, like, lower-level diseases. But, like, in Morrowind, and I think, actually, in Skyrim and Oblivion, if you get vampirism, you need to get a certain cure. Mm -hmm. If you get corpus, well, you're screwed until well, you do the well, main in quest. Skyrim, you have to actually do a quest to cure your... Right, but for this kind of thing, maybe the cure is hard to find. You can't do the quest, but you can pay someone to do it for you. Or whatever, like, you're too exhausted, you're too sick, or whatever... It, it kind of adds another layer to the game. It adds depth to the game, which would make it a great RPG. And again, it's just another modular difficulty thing. You don't have to have that on. You can have it Skyrim level difficulty, you know, real simplistic crap, or you can have this on and give your game more depth. I just thought of another difficulty thing. I know it has nothing to do with this, but let's talk about it. Okay. Okay, I want depth to actually be not, oh, where do you want to load your save? Your death, this would be like, I don't think they actually put this in the game. When you die, you start the game entirely over again. So you start the intro, like maybe it's different or something, and the actions you made with your previous character are still effective in the game. That might be something more along the lines of not really difficulty per se. I mean, I guess you could put it like at extreme difficulty, kind of like running Iron Man, but that would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it would fit into, I guess it... Maybe kind of would. Because it's almost like Dark Souls-esque. Yeah, I know there's kind of mods that, for, well, at least for Skyrim that I've seen, and there's one for Morrowind, that do something similar, but you, you come back from the dead. You have to fight, come back from the dead. But that's not a bad idea, having it, kind of like an Iron Man mode. I guess it'd be above survival, then. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, when you die, you wouldn't say load save. It would just have a loading screen, and all of a sudden, you are resurrected as a new level one player. But you can find your corpse to get yeah, your you items. Yeah, you can find your corpse... And, uh, like, you, they could introduce a new, like, uh, you find the soul of your previous character. Like, kind of like Dark Souls, and you get your levels back or something. I don't know. Uh, they'd have to fit it into the lore, though. Well, I could see, like, you know, finding... Because this would be, like, the player character at that point isn't really the hero incarnate or whatever. They're just somebody who could be a hero. Like, kind of like in Morrowind. You could be the Nair of Rain, you could not be the Nair of Rain. Only time will tell. Well, but... actually, I just figured away, you could, um find a new thing where you could cast uh, uh, Soul Trap on your corpse, and then you'd get your soul in a Soul Trap, and you'd have to go to someone to put those the skills back on yourself. That'd be interesting. Um, I was going to say they should also have a chance of the, your corpse getting looted if you take too long. So if you take a couple months, somebody else is going to come upon that body eventually. And steal your levels. And that would items. be really awesome. That would be. That would be. You, we're talking about things I don't think Bethesda has the mental capacity to handle, but that would be awesome. If you're an indie game developer and you're hearing this, make a game out of it. Yeah, really. <laughs> like, 
ex that's kind of like even more extreme RPG Dark Souls. Like, just, just fuse Dark Souls and Skyrim together. Skyrim Souls. Or Dark Rim. No, let's not say Dark Rim. <laughs> Skyrim Souls. Sky Souls. There you go. Another aspect, uh, building, well, not really building off what you said, building out the whole other thing I was saying, which it works either way, um, would be speechcraft and mercantile. Now, I know they're not technically in Skyrim. I mean, they kind of are. Mercantile's kind of in there with the speechcraft skill tree. Mm -hmm. But I think they should come back as separate things. That's my opinion. But for these two things being, you know, somewhat together, you should have a harder time with them at a higher difficulty and an easier time at a lower difficulty. So at a higher difficulty, it's harder to get better prices. It's harder to barter. Get it? Harder to barter? I can't harder to barter. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, it's harder to earn someone's trust back when you've betrayed their trust, if you can even earn it back at all. And, of course, like, let's say you attack Bellathor in Skyrim. You can go right back to him after you pay your fine and he acts like nothing happened. Well, at a higher difficulty, they would act like something happened. They would hate you. You would have to earn your way back into their good graces. Um, actually, if they should add in, if, if there's a guy who's a complete a-hole and you attack him, the town folks will cheer you on. Yeah, of course, there should be people who fear you after you attack them. There basically needs to be more diversity in your interactions with the world and people. And that's a topic for an entirely different video, sadly, because that will take a couple hours to go through. Oh, yeah. Stupid Bethesda. But, um, you know, not just mercantile, there's also interactions with regular people. You help somebody out successfully do a quest for them, they like you more. You don't help somebody out, you refuse to do a quest for them, and it, you know... Their hurts them in some way. Yeah, the disposition goes down first of all, which that happened to Morrowind, but also maybe it hurts them later on in some way, like, you know, that guy couldn't get his sword back, so he goes out and his wife divorces him. And he dies. And they hate you even more now. So there really needs to be that kind of versatility to it with a higher difficulty, but with an easier difficulty, it should be less versatility to the point where you can't piss someone off. <laughs> Try as you might. Oh, you're stabbing me? Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thank you for stabbing me. So, the next thing I think would be good to cover would be injuries. Mm -hmm. you know, when you're playing the game, you get attacked, you know, your health goes down. That's typical. That's that's usually what happens in an RPG. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Plot twist. Um, but I think what should happen at a higher difficulty is you get, like, fractures, broken bones, stuff like that that can't be healed instantly. Because we see in Skyrim, and we've even seen a little bit in Oblivion, the people cannot be healed by magic in every single case. Magic is great. Mm -hmm. It can heal minor wounds. But something like, you know, being run through with a sword, damaging your internal organs, that kind of thing. Well, you'd have to be an insanely high-level healer. Well, yeah. But, you know, potions can't fix everything. You can go to those soldiers in that tent in Skyrim in the Imperial Fort and try to heal and nothing happens. They're still injured. So, more complex damage. I think you said Fallout New Vegas they had something like Fallout that? Fallout New Vegas had a much better, especially if you played it on really hard difficulty, you had to drink water... You had to, that's I know that's separate. That's a separate thing. Uh, but you had to drink water. Your health didn't regenerate. Uh, if you broke a leg, you couldn't just uh, use a stem pack and it was fixed. You actually had to go get a doctor's bag, and I think it actually might have even like taken an hour to administer, yeah, or something like that. And it was so it was not as complicated as I wanted, but it was still better than yeah what Skyrim had to offer. And, well, even in Morrowind or Daggerfall, none of them offered this. So I think that should be a thing that's offered. Like, if you break your leg, mm -hmm. you have to limp or stagger or drag yourself. You know, it's going to be an extra level of challenge, whereas easier modes, it wouldn't be that way. You know, you put it in a simpler, easier mode and you wouldn't have these problems. You know, like, even Fallout 4, which for all its issues actually has, if you break your leg, you walk slower. Right. Uh, granted, it's way easier to heal your leg. You just use a stem pack, which is stupid, um, exactly. But you still walk slower, so, yeah. And there can be other effects, you know, you get poisoned, like someone splashes poison in your eyes, you're partially blinded, and you need to find your way home to get a like, medical cure. Uh, you get hit with something enough that it rips your skin up, you're gonna bleed out. You need to bandage it right then and there, and then go get it, you know, fully healed back in town. Or if you have a good healing skill, you can heal it yourself if you have the right stuff on hand. I think that would be... Well, that, that is an essential thing for difficulty in the Elder Scrolls. If that's not in the next game, I don't think Bethesda knows what they're doing anymore. Because, I don't think they've known what they're doing yeah, in a while. They've just been kind of shooting in the dark and hoping it works. And so far, it's working for them somehow. But, you know, this is going to... The reason why we're talking about difficulty, it will bring back older fans of the game 
who like the harder style games while still leaving you know the new casual fans able to play the game as well so everybody's satisfied i think this would bring people back that would certainly make me like the elder school six more mm -hmm. have that kind of difficulty in there where you have to heal yourself it's not all just instant potion 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 food 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 and i was thinking at the survival level of difficulty i know we're going to make survival another topic at the end but uh you know no menu pausing when you're trying to heal mm -hmm. so you have to have your things hot keyed your potions to keep yourself alive so, so dark souls menus pretty much and the potions will act like they do in Left 4 Dead 2, the you know, pill bottles. It mm. gives you a pseudo-health boost. It's not actually there. It'll drain over time, but it mm. keeps you from falling over dead. So it'll keep you alive, but you still need to heal yourself. That'd okay. be fun. One of the major things that I've always thought was odd was when you uh, put the difficulty on. Yeah, people did more damage, but the quest ne didn't necessarily get more difficult. Right. So, you know... Instead of having enemies do more damage, there could simply be more enemies, or there could be more traps, or the enemies became more aware, like you would be harder to sneak. Um, Basically, tasks get harder. You can fail quests if you don't do them in time, or if you screw up and your enemy gets away, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's more enemies stopping you, slowing you down. Uh, you can kind of fail at doing... Like potion making, well, you can fail that. You can fail that already. So. Yeah, but this could be like you a higher level. You can fail it harder. You can fail it harder where there's a bad reaction to it. Like you burn your hand or something. Right, or fail enchanting or spell casting, and there's a little bit of a backfire, or you know, some weird thing happens. That Basically, would, that'd be like a really trolly thing. And you cast your fireball, and you didn't. You, 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 you know, healed your foe instead. Yeah, or you misfired and you burn your hand off or something. Kind of like, like a Dungeons and Dragons thing when you roll a one. Uh, Actually, that'd be kind of cool if they put it like a, a dice roll style for uh, the difficulty. Just like um, card, was it Cards Against Humanity? Cards of Fate, or just, oh. what was it called? I forget, it was one of those uh, cool indie games they had for a while. It was where it, it was going around different areas, but then it used dice and cards to generate what the difficulty would be of each dungeon. Right. I forget what the name was called. It was very fun. Um but yeah, something essentially like that, like doing things for people would be more difficult and you have a chance of failing. In Skyrim, you really couldn't fail a quest unless it was like joining the Imperial Legion if you joined the Stormcloaks. It was quote-unquote a failed quest. Fail! Even though it technically wasn't even a quest. You just were given the option. To, you could never even do it and it'd be fine. It was it's stupid. True. It was That was pointless. So actual failable quests like you can in Morrowind, would be great. Like in Morrowind, you have escort missions where you can help people get to certain shrines for the temple. If they get killed, you fail. You die. Yeah, you fail. Yeah, and there's no going back and trying that again. So, at a higher level of difficulty, that needs to be a thing. Something else we've already talked about would be weapons and armor degradation. Now, I don't want this to be in the sliding bar, because I've mentioned before... I'm okay with the idea, but make it a checkbox. Because... Well, that's what I said, is it's not going to be a sliding bar anymore. It's going to be like the Kerbal Space Program style, right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of those things where you have a checkbox, but it's going to have other options in it. Like, you know, quick like realistic degradation versus just having Morrowind-style degradation. Okay, there needs to be checkboxes within checkboxes. checkbox -ception. <laughs> So, like, it's like one of those spider grid things. You click on the checkbox, a whole other list of checkboxes appear. <laughs> That's actually what I was thinking. You click on it, and then the options below it appear. And maybe even more! No. You're going too far, Dave. This is Bethesda we're talking about. We'll be lucky if we even get a difficulty option in the next game. Difficulty? What's that? You mean, can you mean like the button you can hit to hit skip uh, cutscenes? No. Oh, God, that should be the difficulty. Uh, but definitely weapons and armor degradation. It should be visible, too. I don't like a little bar like the hand underneath the weapons of Morrowind. Or like the weapon fading on the little icon in Oblivion. I want visual degradation. Your sword starts to chip and bend a bit or warp, you know, or get dull. Your hammer starts to bend, you know, your spear breaks. It actually yeah. be kind of funny if, like, your weapon degradation could actually, in some cases, help you. So, like, someone goes to hit your sword and they break your sword, but... The other half of the sword flies and impales them or something, and you win. That would be hilarious. I know that's way over the top, but, you know... Yeah, they'll never do it. They'll never Modders do will do that, though. I guarantee a modder will do that. They heard it now, and they want to do it. Mm -hmm, they do. And the same thing with armor degradation. You should be able to see it, you know, go in the third person, or, you know, look at it in the mirror or something. Which, by the way, mirrors and windows you can see through into the outside world better be in the next game. Just an off-the-wall thing. Like, seriously, 
we're on next next generation by now or some crap. Come on, Bethesda. You you can you can take as much as I don't like comparing Witcher and Elder Scrolls. The Witcher has done some stuff better than you, <laughs> which is sad. But yeah, you should be able to see it. It should be a thing. You should be able to repair it if you have high enough skill. While you're on the road, you can do like kind of minimalistic repairs. When you get to an actual forge, you can do full repairs. Thing kind of like with the health, you know, kind of like taking potions and then going in town to get healed. But yeah, that'd be a, a nice depth to have back in the games. You know, like give us something you took out Bethesda. Dun, dun, dun. Todd Howard. Something else we'd like to see would be uh, no fast travel and no map at a higher difficulty. While some people might think that that would be more of a survival thing, I'd like to see that as kind of an independent option that's not necessary for survival, because I'd like to actually use that without having to play survival. Mm -hmm. but, survival is just sometimes too difficult. Yeah, well, or if you just want to play around. But a paper map should be given to the player, one that's fully colored in, and you have to figure out where you're at from there. So, you know, it'll show, like, different trade routes and whatnot. You can draw that on there or whatever as you discover them. But it's a paper map. It doesn't show you exactly where you're at. You have to figure out where you're at. And there's no fast travel because you can't click on anything. And, of course, no compass showing you where your quest is. So you have to rely on directions. So there better be directions in the next game, Bethesda. I wanted to say one thing I thought was really cool. I just remembered. Uh, Metro 2033. Uh, was it? 33? Yeah, yeah. Had a... Um... It had a compass, so you pulled up, you had a clipboard, and you had a list of objectives, you had a compass showing which way you were going, and the thing you had to, to figure out which way you were going wasn't a map marker, you had a lighter. And the lighter, the way the flame was bending would be the way you would go. The, and I just, because lo, a lot of people didn't know that, because it was such hmm. a odd thing, and most people didn't even know what key it was to bring up your lighter. <laughs> Well, they could have something like that for, like, mage characters and kind of, like, clairvoyance, only one that works, unlike in Skyrim. Oh! Because <laughs> that one was just broken as hell. Uh, but, you know, that would be a, an added layer of difficulty, which would be quite a bit of fun. You know, you'd have to, you know, become, what do you call those people? Uh, cartographer? Map makers? Cartographer? Yeah, that's the word for it. Word, yeah. Word. Yeah, you'd have to be able to read maps. And a compass, I'm not sure if compasses exist in the Elder Scrolls. They might. Magic compasses should, or something. Well, I know they have some things of how to tell direction, so there might be something similar to that. That would be interesting to see. I would like to see how Bethesda would handle that. I'm going to look that up right now. Okay, well, this next thing is kind of different, but what about you actually get robbed in the game? Like, you can be pickpocketed, your house can be robbed while you're away if you don't have a guard there. Thanks, Lydia. Or you might, you could get, if you have a really bad robbery, they can kill your guard. Wow, who doing? <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Is it the Dark Brotherhood? Jeez, Dave. Well, I feel like the richer you are, the more likely... Yeah, the more they're going to come after you. So the higher your value, the more they come after you. And the greater variety... Like, they might actually consider to start killing guards if you have a lot of money. Right. So, you know, the higher difficulty you have, the more likely you're going to get robbed. And, you know, the worse it can be. They can steal a lot of things. So it would obviously make you want to hide things quite well. Uh, lock them up in chests, lock your door, which that should be a spell again, because, come on, Elder Scrolls, Bethesda. Lock your... What's it? Lock your kids, lock your yeah. wife, lock your husbands, too, because he's stealing everybody up in here. Wasn't it he was raping up everyone yeah. in here? Yeah. <laughs> now he's stealing. But the point is, you know, there should be that layer of difficulty in there. Someone pickpockets you. You obviously get some kind of, like, notification like well, you'll have some kind of feedback to know uh, i say you would only know the next time it would give you an it will tell you um let's say like you're in a city so before you leave the city let's say you check your inventory it only tells you after you check your inventory okay but i was thinking there could be some kind of really soft audible feedback to know that you're being robbed so you have to really be paying attention to those songs pickpocketing you like and you can actually see it if you you know, someone is actually sneaking up at you and trying to pick you. Yeah. Um, now, this might be difficult in third person because they're going to have a hard time robbing you. But most people play in first person. Because, you know, that's the, play, the way you're supposed to play the game. Yeah, that's the way the game was meant to be played, plebs. So play it in first person or don't play at all. It's no surprise that the uh, AI in the Bethesda game sucks so bad. 
Artificial yeah. intelligence has never been Bethesda's strong suit. It is getting better. I will give them that. It has vastly improved since Daggerfall. Uh, even since Morrowind is vastly improved. People no longer run into a rock the entire time. They only do that sometimes. Well, it's really not that difficult to improve on a potato. This is true. <laughs> you can improve upon this Bethesda, but I think as the difficulty goes up, the intelligence of the people around you goes up. I.e., it's no longer that easy to rob people. They know when you're insulting them with sarcasm. They have wittier comebacks. Which isn't much of a difficulty thing, but I'd love to see that anyway. Uh, you know, just more intelligence. You shoot somebody while you're in sneak mode in a cave and they don't say, Huh, must have just been the wind. While well, their friend is laying on the ground and they have a, a, a freaking arrow lodged in their eye. Oh, uh, actually, I just thought of something really cool. Is like, you know, let's say you're an elf. I don't know why, just, I'll make this quick. You're an elf and you use elf arrows. So then, let's say you just go into sneak into one place, kill one person with an elf arrow. Then that will gang will put out a, a bounty for an elf. Yeah. So that would be pretty cool. That would be interesting to see different racial variants of arrows and weapons, you know, and armor making people look for different people. That would be cool. But definitely smarter AI. I mean, this isn't asking much Bethesda. At the very least, you need to give that option because, for the love of God, I should not be able to walk into a freaking bandit camp with a crossbow in broad daylight, crouch down, and kill everybody because they have no idea what the hell's going on. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Well, like, seriously, you can just steal it from some other game. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do it. Just make it happen. Just make it work. So, moving on to this next part, and this is kind of two things in one, but they kind of go hand to hand, would be natural disasters and treacherous terrain. Now, what that means is, like, Obviously, natural disasters, tornadoes, floods, whatnot, should be possible blizzards, at higher difficulty. Blizzards, hail. Uh, things that will really affect the game world, make it harder for you to move around. You know, maybe a river overflows and passing is not going to be possible because the current's too strong. Things like that would be interesting. And the reason it goes hand-to-hand -hand with terrain is because when it rains, the rocks should get slipperier. When it snows, obviously the water can freeze. And, you know, you can try to walk across water and slip and fall and fall through the ice. Break your leg. Break your leg. Uh, you know, trying to climb a mountain, maybe a rock comes loose because the rain eroded away whatever little dirt it was nestled into that was there for some reason that happened to be there. Things like that would give an extra dimension to the game. And I know that not a lot of people would choose that as a difficulty option, but I know quite a few would. And maybe a third of the Elder Scrolls community who has played the older games would enjoy that kind of option. That would require you to buy things like climbing gear and safety gear and whatnot to keep your character safe, which that's a completely different video for features. That would be awesome to have different types of... You found Daedric, uh... <laughs> Daedric climbing gear. <laughs> that one day, Mar Maroon's dig and just wanted to climb the mountain. <laughs> like, if... If Elder Scrolls VI was advertised on that, I would buy it. <laughs> Pretty sure everybody would buy it. Of course, those would be advertised on having no skills in their quest, but that's not the point. Uh, you know, treacherous terrain isn't just that. They're like little holes. I mean, there's a hole in Skyrim where you could fall in with spikes, but I'm talking like little potholes in the ground, like what Dave ran into the other day. They have grass like over them, so you don't really see them. You break your ankles. So you gotta be careful. You can't sprint everywhere. I know, God forbid. Your horse can no longer go up a 90 degree wall. <gasps> oh, I. <laughs> I want horse to go up a vertical wall. Why won't it do that? Yeah, things just aren't always possible. So, you know, giving it that level of detail, you know, kind of fun would be interesting. I would love to see, like, enemies be susceptible to treacherous strain as well. Someone's charging at you and they step on a rock, it's midwinter, and it was a little bit warmer that day, now it's freezing, and he slips on the ice and... Impales himself and... Well, not impales himself, just falls over and gets you a chance to attack. Okay, would be it nice. would be funny if at one point, like, you're on a high top and someone slips and falls and falls into a giant spike and you're like, Huh, ah, that, that work. It just works. <laughs> Todd Howard could be in the game. That would be, uh, treacherous. Anyway. That's, that's kind of what I would hope to have with natural disasters and treacherous terrain. And again, natural disasters don't just have to be floods, blizzards, tornadoes, that kind of thing. Uh, depending on where it's at, there could be earthquakes. Earthquakes. That will throw you off balance at times. So you got to be careful. You got to be prepared. You got to be ready. Another natural event you're kind of forgetting about is like uh, stampedes. And here we have a massive elk stampede. That would be interesting. That'd Lightning be striking. Awesome. 
Does lightning strike you in Skyrim? I thought it could. Uh, and suddenly a bear got hit by lightning is now a charged bear. That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. But yeah, lightning strikes, all that kind of good stuff. Actually, lightning strikes spawning, you know, um, certain Daedra. Or not Daedra. Storm Atronach. Uh, yeah, Storm Atronach. Lightning strikes. Oh, and there's a Storm Atronach. That might be a bit overkill. On super high difficulty? Who cares? Natural fire? Fire Atronach. So we discussed in the guilds video that we want guilds to require more out of a player, but we think that could be, you know, kind of delegated into the difficulty options. Like in Morrowind, if you didn't have the right skills and attributes to gain a level, you simply weren't capable of doing... Joining. Yeah, or well, advancing. no, you weren't capable of advancing. You could join at any level, you know, you're just an uh, entry-level guy, basic guy who does basic quests, doesn't get the harder quests. Guilds need to have more depth in them in general, but that's just not enough. Having the option to make climbing the ranks in a guild more difficult would be nice. So unlike Skyrim, where the only requirement is that you're alive and a member of the guild, you can gain ranks by actually having enough skill in it. Kind of like how you need to do that at a job to get a promotion. We think it should be, again, optional. You know, not everybody likes that idea. Some people just want a hand-holdy little, you know, give me everything kind of simulator, and other people want a game. And for the people oh. who want a game, that option should be there. So, you know, give your character something to work at. Not much to say on that. Just make it harder to get through the guilds. Make it require more. Make it require skills and attributes. And bribery. It depends on the guild. Some guilds, yeah. Just the little things. It's the little things, with that stuff. The little things. things. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> the last thing we need to talk about, and I know there's probably stuff we missed, and you can throw that in the comments. Is something that's kind of, it's kind of obvious. Survival. Just, there should be a survival mode. I already said one aspect of the survival mode earlier being no pause menu. You know, when you go into the menu to take potions, whatever, that should just be disabled. It, things should still be happening, so you have to hotkey things. Because, you know, that makes sense. Same with reading books. Read books and there's no pause. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting, and it would help with immersion for sure. But uh, there's a few other things that would be great in survival. Take, for example, Necessities of Morrowind. Now, I know that triggered a lot of people who don't like Necessities of Morrowind, but I actually really love that mod. Triggered! And it is a very well done mod. There should be necessities. You need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to drink, you drink too much alcohol, you'll, you know, get drunk. If you don't eat and drink, you'll pass out or pass away. I eat, die, for all you people who don't know what pass away means. <gasps> no! no! Yeah. So that <laughs> needs to be a thing. You know, just the basic thing. Uh, we talked about the injuries before, where they can be taken to the next level in, you know, survival mode, where, I don't know, your leg breaks and you can get an infection. You know, not just do you have to get a healed, you have to be worrying about infections and stuff like that. You have to be worried when you get, go to the healer that they don't share magical needles. And, uh... Can we talk about a healer or a drug dealer here, Dave? You might get magical AIDS or something. Hey, people have gotten AIDS at the dentist before. Sadly. But yeah, you know, just giving that extra layer to the you know injury thing as a survival difficulty, infections and whatnot. Uh, body temperature. If you jump into a freezing cold lake in the middle of winter, there's going to be a problem. Uh, you're going to need to warm up like a fire. You're that should be a have, thing. You're going to have problems. You're going to have a bad time. So the camera can be shaking, the character can be making noises, you can see their breath in front of their face, they're you know, getting sick from it. You lose disease resistance and stuff like that. You become really weak to disease if you don't get your body temperature back up. Vice versa, if you're in a really hot area and you get too hot, you'll collapse from exhaustion and die. Heat stroke. So taking care of your character's internal body temperature would definitely be interesting. Also, uh, I know this from standing a lot in the sun. The longer you stand in the sun, you more likely get headaches. So Yeah, sunburn, you know, just like things that humans normally go through. And again, this is a survival mode, so this wouldn't affect the base game. Uh, you can get burnt by fires where you know it injures you and you have to wait till it heals up for a couple days. That kind of thing, so you won't be able to hold the sword as strongly or whatever. Oh, my sword went flying out of my head and impaled the enemy! Or they impaled me. Just, you know, things like that would be nice to see in the game. I'm sure some people want to see, you know restroom use as well 
I honestly don't like that idea, but if you uh, if you have to have it in, that could be an option for survival mode. Uh, knowing Bethesda, that probably would be in the game. It probably would. Be, it'd probably be in the base game, <laughs> just because it's Bethesda. <laughs> you carry a bucket with you at all times. <laughs> Screw that! You're in the middle of nature. Eh, it doesn't work for everybody. Some people have problems, Dave. <laughs> but yeah, just that little extra added layer of fun within the survival kind of feel. Be nice. Mm -hmm. You know, you hunt, you fish, you have to cook your food, obviously, so you don't get diseased. You could definitely roleplay way better with that. Yeah. And that would add a lot more depth to the game than what Bethesda is capable of doing. <laughs> it's called Moderns. <laughs> yeah, I know. The Moderns will probably have to do this one for us. But it would be nice to see. You know, there's other things that can be in there that I am not thinking of right now, I'm sure. You know, not just keeping yourself alive from hot and cold and infection and whatnot, and eating and whatnot. There's probably something else you're thinking of right now, so drop it in the comments, because that probably isn't a bad idea. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever you are thinking of right this instant, get your mind out of the gutter. Come on, Nam Nam. Okay, well, uh, sorry this video is a little bit shorter than usual. It's still quite long for a lot of people out there who have really, no time. I'm not really sure how long it's going to be, but probably like 45 minutes. Maybe. Nah, no, Maybe. I don't, I don't think it's going to be Nam Nam would want that. We're doing it for Nam Nam, Dave. We'll make this outro really long. <laughs> we'll go this outro go another 15 minutes. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, thank you for stopping by and watching. If you enjoyed the video, Please drop us a like. If you did not enjoy the video, please. go ahead and hit that dislike button. We don't really care. Also, please give all your ideas that we missed in the comments. Uh, share the video with fellow Elder Scrolls fans who think that there should be modular difficulty in the game. And I will try to make a graphic of what I think the difficulty menu should look like instead of just a stupid slider or a four option menu. So that will be there. Uh, if you can think of a better idea than what I came up with the Kerbal Space Program, uh, you know, example, then let us know. We're open to suggestions on this, and let us know what you think could make the game better in terms of difficulty. Yeah. That's just, there's nothing really else to say. It pretty much covers all our bases, I think. I think we've pretty much covered everything. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed. If you are new to the channel and you want to see more Elder Scrolls 6 videos, you can hit that subscribe button because we, we've been making them. You can go look at our Elder Scrolls 6 playlist. Mm -hmm. And again, please share the video with everybody. We would appreciate it greatly. Also, what's the next video we're doing? Ah, uh, yes. I've got the next video we're going to be doing is a viewer request by Nam Nam. Nam Nam! It would be on quests and the main quest, you know, like how they would handle that, mm -hmm. how they could do that. So that's our next topic of discussion. discussion. Also, we're, there's some other videos we're thinking about. I don't want to spoil it, but they'll be we're, separate. Yeah, we're going to make a roadmap for you guys, a video about all the things we're going to cover. So keep your eyes open for that as well. Keep your eyes unpeeled, because seriously, that's a really weird thing to say. Peel your eyes. Anyway. It sounds painful. Yeah. yeah, do not peel your eyelids off. It is not healthy. Yeah, anyway. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah.